Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we will be resuming uh, from where we left off in the Windows Privilege Escalation series. So we're going to be taking a look at how to exploit weak registry permissions or how to elevate your privileges by exploiting weak uh, registry permissions. And of course, uh, we have previously explored the process of exploiting insecure service permissions and unquoted service parts. Now, in the case of weak registry permissions, um, you need to have an understanding of what Windows registry is used for. In the context of services, the Windows registry can be used to store information pertinent to services like uh, the actual uh, service path or the image path as it's called. And that really just is the path of the service uh, so that whenever you start a service, Windows knows uh, where to actually find that particular uh, service in order to execute it. Now, as I said, uh, not all applications utilize the Windows registry for information like this. And in the previous case, when we were exploiting the unquoted service path, uh, we weren't interacting with the Windows registry. Now, uh, in this case, um, again, I've already established access to the target system. Uh, what we will need to do is identify a service uh, that essentially runs with system privileges or with administrative privileges so that when we uh, essentially replace the executable and uh, you know start the service again uh, we will obtain uh, a meterpreter session or a reverse uh, shell session with elevated privileges and of course uh, that can easily be done by using the sqc uh, command and then of course we can utilize the access check executable to essentially identify uh, you know what users can actually write or make changes to that particular uh, to that particular service, and uh, again, uh, if the application or the service uh, utilizes uh, the Windows registry, we can essentially modify uh, various uh, you know key values for that particular service, and one of them is going to be the image path, which is essentially the actual service path, and we can replace that with a path to our own malicious executable, right? So what we can do here is I'm just going to head over into my interpreter session and I'll open up shell and we'll navigate to the root of the C drive under temp. And of course, we'll utilize the WinPs utility just to verify that we know we, uh, that that particular service is indeed, uh, is indeed vulnerable. So we'll say WinPs.64exe and then services info and we'll hit enter. And uh, you can see that uh, we'll identify the actual registry service or the insecure registry service. And this particular service has been set up to, uh, to actually, you know, uh, help you understand this vulnerability. And then if we take a look at the, uh, the check here where it essentially looks if you can modify any service registry, it'll tell you uh, that we can essentially modify the following, uh, the following service, which is the registry service. And uh, if we go back into the documentation, we can essentially, you know, uh, identify the privileges or, you know, get the actual configuration of this service. So we can say, uh, you know, SCQC registry service. Uh, so registry service, hit enter. And uh, as you can see, the binary path name now has or is encapsulated by quotation marks. So we can't perform the unquoted service path uh, exploit technique here. And it starts with local system. So that means it starts with, uh, you know, uh, system or anti authority system privileges, which are the highest on a Windows system. All right. So that's the first check. We can then use the access check utility. So I'll navigate to the, uh, you know, to the privesc directory that contains that binary. So cd privesc. And we can then say access check. And then I'm just going to copy the arguments here. So we accept the EULA. And we're checking uh, that particular registry, um, that particular registry entry. So um, we will copy that, and I'll just paste it in here. And of course, you can obtain that by taking a look at the WinPs output. So all you need to do is just copy that, and you'll be able to identify the permissions uh, that um, uh, that are essentially required to modify that path. So in this case, it looks like my interpreter session died. So I'm just going to uh, obtain a new interpreter session here. All right, so I've reobtained my interpreter session and uh, continuing from where I left off, we're going to be executing the access check um, executable and essentially identifying the permissions, uh, you know, pertinent to this particular uh, service, more specifically the actual registry entry. So I'll hit enter 
And uh, as you can see here, it tells us that uh, NT Authority Interactive, which means pretty much all un, uh, unprivileged users have read and write authority, right? So we have the ability to make changes to the uh, to this particular services uh, registry entries. So uh, let me just take a look at the TriHackMe documentation. As you can see, uh, that is done. So yeah, this group essentially allows all logged in users, all logged on users to make changes, which is great. Um, we then need to override the image path registry key to point to the reverse uh, uh, the reverse.exe ex executable uh, that I created. And of course, we created that previously. Um, so we're just going to be utilizing that. So what we need to do first and foremost is get an understanding of uh, of how you know services can store uh, you know configuration data like the image path or the service path as it's also known as. So I'll just open up the RDP session here. And we can open up the registry editor. So reg edit, there we are. And we're looking for HK local machine um, under system and current control set. We then have services and we're looking for the registry service. So that is, uh, should be right over here. So let me see if I can identify it. Um, uh, there we are, registry service. And uh, if let me just expand that, you can see that you have the image path, right? So. This is essentially the service path, as you can see here, the option is specified there. And uh, you can we can essentially click on it to modify it. Uh, we can do it directly via RDP, uh, although if you have access via a interpreter session, that can be done uh, by essentially modifying or utilizing the following command. And we then need to specify the actual path to our malicious uh, you know, payload that we've generated. So as I did previously, I've already generated a uh, a payload with MSF Venom, uh, with MSF Venom, and in this case, I'm just going to remain rename it from common.exe, and we'll just call it reverse.exe just so that things are simple. So reverse.exe. There we are. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll upload it to a directory. In this case, it uh, actually recommends that we upload it to uh, the privesc directory. So. I'll just take a step back and uh, cd privesc. There we are. And we'll say upload. And this is under documents in my case, under try hack me, windows privesc and reverse.exe. Right, so I'll upload that. And there we are, that is done. And we then need to set up the actual options or set up the multi handler. So I'll open up a new MSF uh, or new Metasploit session. And of course, you can verify that by taking a look at the command you utilize to generate uh, that particular uh, that particular payload with MSF Venom. All right. So in this case, I used the following payload, right? And um, we will get back to that in a second. So we will say MSF console, hit enter. And uh, we're then going to set or use the multi handler module and then set the payload, set the L host options as well as the L port options. So there we are. So use multi handler, set the payload. There we go. Set the L host option, uh, which I'll just get from here. There we go. Set L host. Set the L port to 1234. And I can just hit exploit or run and it'll start the reverse TCP handler. All right, so now that that is uploaded and we've set up the multi handler, we can essentially modify uh, the actual image path through the use of the registry command. So we can say registry add HKLM system current control set services registry service. We're modifying the image uh, path and we're setting that to our own custom path. So we'll modify that as we're pasting it in. So we'll paste that in there. And uh, yeah, we don't need to modify the path. It's on the privesc reverse.exe. We hit enter. As you can see, the operation completed successfully. And uh, what we can do now is, of course, start the registry service. And in this case, it might already be started. So I'm going to say SC start uh, registry service. All right, so it's going to start it. And we should receive a connection on our TCP handler. There we are, command shell session one opened there. And uh, you know, I can say, who am I? We're currently NT authority system. So we've uh, successfully been able to elevate our privileges. And of course you can go ahead and upgrade this to a interpreter session. I've covered that quite a bit. 
Uh, but that's uh, really as simple as that when it comes down to exploiting weak registry permissions. Uh, the objective being uh, you need to identify a, a service that uh, again runs with system privileges or with administrative privileges for that matter. And you also need to have the ability to modify uh, the registry entry or the values uh, the, the values for the uh, this particular service within Windows registry. Right. Uh, once you can do that, you can essentially modify the image path and uh, you can replace the actual image path with a path to your own uh, malicious executable that you've generated. In this case, the malicious executable essentially provided us with a command shell. All right. So that is done. And that really is it when it comes down to exploiting weak registry permissions. In the next video, we'll take a look at insecure service executables, which is pretty much uh, the same, except uh, we're just going to be replacing the actual executable uh, for a particular service. And of course, we require it to have, uh, we require or we are required to have the appropriate permissions in order to do that. And then once we start the service, it essentially executes the malicious uh, executable instead of the legitimate executable. So it's uh, fairly simple in regards to what we've been doing so far. That being said, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section. If you want to reach out to me personally, you can do that by joining the Discord server. The link to that is in the description section. Or you can reach, uh, you can reach out to me via Twitter, as that is the platform that I'm mostly on or mostly active on. And that is going to be it for this video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and this is a formal thank you. So thank you Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.